The hatch patterns that you apply to areas of a drawing are actually a special object called a hatch object. Notice that I've created a layer called hatch. Like most objects, hatch patterns are typically created on the current layer and take on the current color, line type, and transparency. It's a good idea to put hatch patterns on their own layer. That way, you can hide hatch patterns by turning off the hatch layer. But unlike most other types of objects, when you create a hatch object, you can also specify the layer on which the hatch object will be created. So you can create the hatch object on a layer other than the current layer. I'll make the zero layer the current layer. To add a hatch, click the hatch button in the draw panel of the home ribbon. Notice that when you start the hatch command, the ribbon changes to the hatch creation contextual ribbon. The tools in this ribbon let you select the hatch pattern you want to apply, as well as control its color, background color, transparency, angle, and scale. If you expand the Properties panel, notice that you can also specify the layer on which the hatch will be created. I'll create the hatch on the Hatch layer. A hatch pattern can only be applied to a closed area. You can select the area to be hatched one of two ways. By picking points or by selecting objects. Picking points is initially the default method, but whichever method you choose will become the default method the next time you use the hatch command. Notice that in the command window, and with dynamic input enabled at the cursor, I can see that the program is prompting me to pick an internal point. In the pattern panel in the ribbon, I can see the pattern that will be applied. I can also use the controls in the other panels of the ribbon to change the color, angle, scale, transparency, and other settings. When I move the cursor into a closed area, the program immediately displays a preview of the hatch, so I can see what the hatch will look like. If I move the cursor outside the area, the preview disappears. If I click inside that area, the preview is added to the drawing, but I can still make changes. For example, I can click in the Scale field and type a new scale factor to adjust the scale at which the hatch will be applied. I can also choose a different hatch pattern. If I select the wrong area or object to hatch, I can use the Undo option to remove the hatch and then select a different object or click inside a different area. I'm still looking at a preview of the hatch. Notice that in the command window, I can see that the hatch command is still active and the hatch creation contextual ribbon is still visible. Once I'm satisfied with what the hatch will look like, I can either click the close hatch creation button in the ribbon or just press enter. Let's do that again. I'll start the hatch command again, and then move the cursor over the area I want to hatch. Notice that here we have two intersecting circles. When I move the cursor over that area, the hatch preview displays just inside that area, even though it's formed by the two separate objects. Again, I can click inside that area, and then, if I'm satisfied, either click the Close Hatch Creation button in the ribbon or just press Enter to complete the command. The other way to select the area to be hatched is by selecting objects. I'll click the Hatch button again to display the Hatch Creation contextual ribbon. This time, in the Boundaries panel, I'll click the Select button. Notice that now, 
the program prompts me to select objects, and when I move the cursor over an object, I no longer see a preview of the hatch. But now I can select objects using any object selection method. If I select this rectangle, I immediately see a preview of the hatch pattern that will be applied. Again, I can use the tools in the ribbon to change the hatch pattern, the scale at which it will be applied, and other settings. Also notice that the entire rectangle is filled with the hatch pattern. The program ignores the circle and hatches right through it, because I didn't select the circle. The program is also still prompting me to select objects. If I select the circle, Notice that now the hatch pattern no longer fills the circle. Again, when I'm satisfied with the appearance of the hatch, I can simply press Enter or click the Close Hatch Creation button. Let's erase that hatch and repeat the process. Notice that since the last method I used was to select objects, that has become the default. In the ribbon, I'll click Pick Points. Now the program is once again prompting me to pick an internal point. Notice that when I move the cursor into the area inside the rectangle but outside the circle, the program automatically detected the circle inside the rectangle. When you use the Pick Points method, the program automatically detects closed areas, whereas when you use the Picked Objects method, the program can only determine the hatch boundaries from the objects you specifically select. When I'm satisfied with the appearance of the hatch, I can complete the command by either clicking the Close Hatch Creation button or simply pressing the Enter key.